Good evening, and welcome to another edition of Real Folk Talk. Before we get started, you just have to know that we operate in the realm of five. Like, comment, subscribe, notify, and share. Those five actions will help push our stuff out to more and more people. And now let's get into it, because this is ridiculous. We have another tragic, violent, and senseless shooting, this time at a Walmart. This happened last night about 10, 12, well, 10 o'clock, this happened. The suspect was the night manager, and eyewitnesses said that he walked into the break room, looked around, pulled out his gun, a pistol, and started shooting. He shot two in the break room. He shot two more out on the way out as he's going out the front door of the establishment and wounded others. Now we may never know why he did this because he killed himself. But I ask why? What did these people do that was so heinous, so evil, so, so out of the norm that they had to die? And this goes to the main theme of the show, which is miss me with that. Because I'm tired of it. I am sick to death and tired of it. There seems to be a mass shooting just about every week at this point. And what do Republicans and the right do? Our thoughts and prayers are with the families. Bullshit! Your thoughts and prayers. They're not going to bring those people back. My heartfelt condolences to everyone affected by it. Bullshit! Now the governor and his governor, Glenn Yoinkin, who is a Republican, was talking about, oh, this is this is senseless, this is tragic, our hearts where heartfelt thoughts and prayers go out. This is the same fuck who during his running for his of his seat, his gubernatorial seat, said that we're gonna to, to fight to defend our rights to the Second Amendment. So where are your thoughts and prayers then? Miss me with that shit. Miss me with your your phony heartfelt up some condolences and sincere apologies and thoughts and prayers and everything else like that. Because if you really, really were, you'd have done something about this. In an ideal world, there are no guns. And in several third world countries, they've, they've implemented it. And for the most part, it's been successful. England, Australia, um, I can't think of anything else offhand, but there, there have been several third world countries who successfully banned weapons. And the one that comes to most, goes to my mind the quickest is England, because I lived there for a few years. And the police officers command respect, they're professional, they're courteous, and they don't carry. SWAT carries. Special Ops carries. And the military carries. So you have all these people who don't carry. 
and they seem to come home most nights. Now, now there are times, now there's exceptions to every rule. Have there been shootings in England and places like that? Yes. Because people are people and people will be evil. Evil people do evil things. So yes, you're going to get that from time to time. The kicker is it doesn't happen very often. And I don't know about you guys. But if someone's coming at me with a knife, and someone's coming at me with a gun, I stand a better chance fending off the knife attack than I do the gun attack. Knife is up front, up close and personal. They have to get close. You can disarm that. Guns are ranged weapons. Take you out 50, 75, 100 feet away. And you never see it coming. At least when someone's charging it with a knife, you see them. You can prepare. But all this talk of thoughts, prayers, and condolences, and heartfelt sympathy, and everything else, you can't. Because if you really, truly care about your fellow human being, you take concrete steps to at least curb the violence. In an ideal world, you stop it. But then again, we don't live in an ideal world. But you take steps to stop it. The overwhelming majority of Americans support um, oh, what's the thought? What's the word again? They support gun control. They support background checks. Background checks in and of themselves won't curb the violence. But they can mitigate, they can lessen it because people that shouldn't have these weapons won't get them. And then once again, there are exceptions to that rule because there are some that will come hell or high water, they will own a firearm. And they'll do whatever they do with it. But at least it's a step in the right direction. At least someone saying, hey, look, I'm trying something. I can't take this anymore. I can't let this happen on my watch anymore. I'm trying to do something. And I'm doing it for you guys. Miss me with that. All those people all those crying mothers heartbroken fathers grieving sisters sobbing brothers all those friends mourning the passing of their friends For what? Is this the price that politicians are willing to pay to keep your Second Amendment rights? Now I've always said that the only change will come when it's visited upon them. But I, even then I doubt very seriously change will happen. Because the gun manufacturers, who are the perpetrators of this nonsense, was able to say, oh, I, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, I'm, I'm grieving for you. Here's an extra $500, here's an extra million for your pain and suffering. You want to stop this nonsense? 
sue the gun makers. That'll stop it. Because once you start hitting them in their pockets, in their wallets, then they have no choice but to take notice. It's so easy to turn and look away when all this stuff is happening in the, in the um, pursuit of profits. It's so easy to turn a blind eye when a child, when a mother, when a father, when a sister, when a brother, when a friend loses their life because you know that you got money coming in from the sale of their weapon. So that's the best way to stop them. Hit where it hurts. Sue them. Sue the tar out of these people. Let them know that this is the price that they will pay for the neglect. And make that price so high that they will think two, three, and four times before they force it to stop on us again. Miss me with that shit. No more. Because it's so easy to have thoughts and prayers. And then in the next breath, turn around and continue doing what you're doing. It wasn't me. What if it was you? What if you were the grieving person? Or better yet, what if you were killed by this gun violence nonsense? What if it was you? I would say you would care, but you'd be dead. You wouldn't care. But your family would. Your friends would. they care. And depending upon the friends that you have, and the type of people that run into circles and things like that, they could care for a very, very long time. Is this what you want? Is this the hill you're willing to die on? Is this the line in the sand that you've drawn and you, and you can go no further? How in the name of decency can anybody, anybody sleep well at night knowing that this nonsense goes on? And like I said, it's not like it, 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 it I could say it doesn't happen in other places. It doesn't. It truly doesn't. Sure. Other societies have their problems. But gun violence isn't one of them. Because they got it down tight. And they locked it down. And people may grumble about it, but they go along with it. And that's what, that's, what, that's, what, that's what they're afraid of. That's what the gun companies are afraid of. People will eventually deal with it. They always have. They adapt. Sure, they may get upset, they may grumble about it, but they'll get over it. And that's what keeps them awake at night. My profits are going down. We got to get more guns in more hands. How can we do that? Oh, I know. When people, when things like this happen, the first thing we'll do is we'll say, see that? If you had a gun, you would have protected yourself. But I ask you this. You can have your gun on your person. 
either tucking your waistband or its own holster. When someone comes in, the only way to stop them is to shoot them first. You are not going to have time to reach for that weapon when the bullet starts flying. You're just not. That's a Hollywood fantasy that too many people are, are buying up and believing in. There was a saying way back in Star, when Star Wars came out, in the cantina scene of Mos Eisley. The original version, when Greedo was killed by Han Solo, Han shot first. Now, they cleaned it up later and had him shooting at the same time. But you know what? So what? What does scumbag do in the, to deal with? Han knew, especially when he said um, that hang over the bounty and I might let you live. It's over. Decision time. Him or me? Time to choose. I choose me. Zap. End of story. Poor Greedo. Oh well. But that's the only way it works. And to go down that rabbit hole, then you have to start thinking, well, how do you know who has a gun and who's going to start shooting? As the state, the guy was a loner. The guy was off. The guy kept to himself. Nobody knew that was coming. And that's what makes it so dangerous. Because somewhere in that man's mind, He said, fuck it. It's a good day to die. But before I go, I'm taking as many suckers with me as I possibly can. And began killing people. My fear is that in 24, 36, 48 hours, and be forgotten. Because we Americans have a horrid, horrid policy of forgive and forget. But not me. I might forgive you. But I'll never forget what you did. And because I will never forget what you did. And it's that much harder for you to try and pull it on me again or someone else to pull that stuff on me again. I might forgive you. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget what you did. Miss me with that nonsense. From the bottom of my heart, I feel for yet another group of people who have to bury, bury a loved one. Bury somebody whose main offense was going to work at a Walmart at night. That's all I did. They have the misfortune of working at Walmart for that night manager. Thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers. Fuck them thoughts and prayers. I want my damn loved one back.
Can your thoughts and prayers get it back for me? That's one of the things that, even like the, the TV shows and stuff like that, irks me to no end. When the police say, condolences on your loss. Sorry. I lost someone who means the world to me and you can, all you can say is, I'm sorry. Something's got to give. I know how much more we as a people can take of every other day, once, twice, maybe three times a week, somebody else loses their lives to gun violence. How much more of this stuff are we supposedly have to take? If the question is asked, what is the price that we must pay to continually have this happen? The price is too high. One person who loses their lives to gun violence is one too many. We got to do something. And it starts with the gun people, the gun lobby, the manufacturers. They have to be made to help accountable for this stuff. Because only then, when their lawsuits hit the millions and millions of dollars, only then will they think about curbing the violence. But as long as things keep going the way they're going, why should they stop? Why should they care? They can take the heat for 12, 24 hours. But soon they'll forget about it, people will be back to normal, and they'll be back to normal. Hit them where it hurts. Hit them where they feel. Hit them in their pockets. Hit them in their wallets. Make that the price that they have to pay every time a lunatic goes with a gun and starts killing people. Make that the hill that they literally have to die on. And watch some people get off that hill. Thoughts and prayers. Miss me with that shit. That's all I have time for.